Aloha and welcome to Conversations to Enlighten and Heal. Today I'll be speaking with Jonathan Goldman, a pioneer and international authority on sound healing. Conversations is sponsored by HealthMasterySystems.com, Holistic Products for Body, Mind, and Soul, and PurePlantEssentials.com, Organic Aromatherapy. Please visit these websites today. Be sure to visit the iTunes Store and subscribe for our complete lineup of shows on Conversations to Enlighten and Heal. A former blues and rock musician and filmmaker, Jonathan has been called the premier sound healing recording artist of the planet. Jonathan is the founder of the Sound Healers Association, an organization dedicated to the education and awareness of sound and music for healing. He is also the founder and director of Spirit Music, which produces music for meditation, relaxation, and self-transformation. Jonathan received a master's degree from Lesley University, researching the uses of sound and music for healing. He has worked with masters of sound from both the scientific and spiritual traditions and is a lecturing member of the International Society for Music and Medicine and presents healing sound seminars throughout the world. Jonathan frequently appears in national and international print media and on television and radio. Jonathan hosts his own internet radio show, Healing Sounds, and writes a monthly column, Frequencies of Healing, with his wife, Andy, for Kinetics Magazine. Jonathan has produced numerous best-selling award-winning recordings, including The Divine Name with Greg Braden, Reiki Chants, Ultimate Ohm, The Lost Chord, and Chakra Chants winner of the Visionary Award for Best Healing Meditation Album. Jonathan's books include Healing Sounds, Shifting Frequencies, Tantra of Sound, which was co-authored with his wife Andy and winner of the 2006 Visionary Award for Best Alternative Health Book, and his latest book is The Seven Secrets of Sound Healing. To learn more about Jonathan Goldman and his work in sound healing, please visit his website at healingsounds.com. Please welcome to the show my very special guest, Jonathan Goldman. Aloha, Jonathan. Welcome to the show. I am so thrilled to have you with us. Aloha, KG. It is a real pleasure to be able to connect and resonate with you and your audience. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. I understand you had a transformational experience that changed your life. Could you tell us about that, Jonathan? (laughs) I'm laughing because as as I think about this, I think, you know, I've had many transformational experiences that have changed my life, but probably the most predominant one that literally shifted me from one course or pattern of existence to another occurred when I was on stage one night playing in a rock and roll band in the seaside town of Marshfield, Massachusetts. And KG, I like to oftentimes tell people that the light of God struck me uh, that night when I was on stage because I don't know what else happened except that I was on stage. I had been performing for over 15 years in different uh, musical groups and this particular group I was uh, playing in uh, was performing I was uh, singing and playing lead guitar and uh, we were doing original songs and all of a sudden for some reason I became aware that the ambiance of the club was full of negativity and violence now no doubt the alcohol the different intoxicants that people were imbibing in were uh, certainly contributing to this, but also the music that I was playing. And I simply had this one thought, which was, gee, I wonder if music could be used to make people feel good. That's all it took, because basically I went home and I began to think about that, and I thought about it more and more. This is probably in late 1979, and... um, Literally, the idea of using sound for healing didn't enter my psyche for about another week or two when I literally was presented with a uh, workshop flyer uh, by a woman named Sarah Benson, who has since become one of my great uh, friends, teachers, and mentors. And um, for me, it was just so very, very strange because two things. First of all, I've been playing 
musically, professionally, in front of audiences for about 15 years. Why that night? And the second thing that I want to say is that for anyone who's listening and likes rock and roll and whatnot, I am not at all denigrating the genre of rock and roll. It's really important for me to state this because I believe that any type of music, depending on the time, the space, the need of the individual and the person creating the music can be therapeutic and healing. For example, the Beatles, with all, you know, really their music, you know, was encoded with love, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. That, you know, type of music is just wonderful. It just happens that the music that I was creating at that specific time was really sort of a punk rock, very, very negative type of music, which, uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about intentionality later, mm -hmm. was not filled with, shall we say, the most positive intentions. So what was your inspiration for your latest book, The Seven Secrets of Sound Healing? My inspiration for that book, uh, which was written, I guess, two or three years ago, I can't quite remember, uh, perhaps even two years ago, it was simply this. I've been in this field now for about 30 years, and The Seven Secrets of Sound Healing is probably my third or fourth or even fifth book. I can't remember right now. But um, I want, uh, as I've been in this field, I've watched the arena of sound healing grow and grow until it is basically reaching mainstream proportions mm -hmm. to such a degree that I was just contacted recently by a mainstream uh, major television network about potentially appearing on it and um, talking about sound healing. So I wanted to write a book that was basically very easy to understand, uh, really made a lot of sense, came from the heart, and really allowed people to understand the power of sound to heal and transform. Mm -hmm. So how did you get started in the field of sound and healing? Well, shortly after I had that experience on stage in Marshfield, I did attend a workshop by uh, this lady, Sarah Benson. And, uh, KG, I had this experience which was um, fairly unique for me at the time, which was there was a circle of people. I was placed in the middle of, of the circle. I was holding a quartz crystal, of which I had never seen one, let alone held one before. People chanted my name. I had, without use of any sort of psychotropic drugs or anything, literally the experience of being lifted out of my body and transported to this uh, amethyst crystalline pyramid in the woods where I was basking in this wonderful green healing energy. And when I came back to my body, I said, I've got to find out more about the sound work. <laughs> Guess so. That was quite a first-time experience. It was. So I uh, basically just strangely being in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. That night, I was invited by Sarah, who, uh, Sarah Benson, who seemed to in, uh, recognize something uh, unique in me, to come to a meeting of some uh, people who'd been in this field for probably 10 years or so. And um, I went to the, uh, to the meeting. It was a potluck dinner. And I was thrilled just to be there. Here I was, this totally new kid on the block, and there were all these people who were teaching uh, in college about the subject and whatnot. And I said, well, this is great. And I said, well, it's the last meeting we're going to have. I said, why is that? They said, well, we just don't have the time and energy to continue uh, doing this uh, sort of uh, phenomena. And I said, you know, I said, I'll do it. I'm going to step up, even though I'm the new kid on the block, and I'm going to basically uh, be the one who, uh, you know, sends out the flyers for the me these meetings and gets people together. So I basically, uh, at the time, formed the Sound Healers Association because in many different traditions, if you give something a name, you give uh, give it life and power, and that's what I did. And we had then monthly meetings of people who were experts in the field of sound healing. Medical doctors, scientists, musicians, shamans, mystics, all sorts of different people uh, who would come and freely present of their time and energy. And I have to tell you, I was getting quite an education from this to such a degree that I thought, gee, 
you know, this is really a coherent and important subject. It's real. It's powerful. And uh, this deserves some sort of uh, accreditation. So I, I ha had a degree in filmmaking from Boston University. And I went to Lesley University, which was in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I said, and they had an independent study program. And I said to him, listen, I uh, really believe that the... Uh, field of sound as a healing modality is extremely important, uh, you know, and I want to do uh, a, a program in this and get accreditation for it. And they said, okay, well, just come in with the necessary papers. The next time I came in, I probably had a stack of papers that was about six inch inches high, and they looked at me and they said, you've got a PhD program there uh, <laughs> already. I said, yeah. I said, I know. And so I did have a master's in that, and... Um, after that, I basically uh, also was involved in a uh, Ph.D. program at Union Institute, which is another, uh, shall we say, uh, one of these um, places where you create your own pro uh, program. My only difficulty with the whole thing was that uh, my first book, Healing Sounds, was published at that same time, and it became very popular. This was in 1992. And uh, basically, um, I had to go on tour for this. And by the time I got back from the tour, I realized it probably there was such interest in my work and such interest in sound healing. I realized it probably wasn't necessary for me to have a PhD in the subject. And so I've continued with the sound healers, with my maybe writing, with a, my own. Maybe you'll get a honorary one. Sometimes. I've been offered one from Colgate <laughs> University, etc. It just has not seemed all that uh, yes. uh, necessary these days. What seems to be necessary is simply that I be able to share as much as possible all that's work with using sound and music as a healing and transformative uh, modality, mm -hmm. be of service to the planet, and be of service to all yeah. those beings who are interested in this field so that we can empower them with the use of sound and music for healing. Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the ways we can use sound for healing, and why is sound healing so important? You've talked about that, so could you give some examples? Uh, KG, uh, the reason I just sighed there was that uh, I almost had a redundant answer for you, which was literally, from my perspective, there's literally no field, no area of life, study, healing, or whatnot that cannot be enhanced by knowledge of how sound and music can heal. So, uh, you know, when you say, what are some of the benefits? Well, here, it's a quote from the New York Times science section from 1988. Sound shaped into dazzling tool can make, break, or rearrange molecular structure and levitate objects. Now, if you can rearrange molecular structure, what aspects of our anatomy of our physical body can't we heal? Question number one. So, I mean, it just goes on and on. Would you like me to give you a uh, sort of just basic little ABCs of how and why sound heals? Yes. Okay, great. Um, okay, we're going to... Uh, I feel like uh, uh, Mary Martin from The Sound of Music. We're going to start at the very beginning, a very good uh, place to start, okay? And uh, I'm not going to go into doe a deer, female deer, you know, but I will say that sound is an energy that travels as a wave. These waves are measured in cycles per second. And how fast or slow these waves go are called its frequency. Very, very deep, low sounds. That's a very, very slow moving frequency. Very, very high sounds. That is a very fast moving frequency. So, for example, the lowest note on a piano is around 24 cycles a second. The highest note on the a piano is around 4,000 cycles a second. We hear from around 16 of these cycles a second to around 16,000 of them. But I really want to suggest to you and to your audience today that 
Uh, just because we can't hear something doesn't mean a sound isn't being created. Yes, well, we know, like with dogs, you know, the very sensitive ears, they can hear sounds that human ear can't hear, right? Totally. Our, our, our friends in the ocean, dolphins, can receive and project information upwards of 180,000 cycles a second, mm -hmm. which is about 10 times greater than our highest level of hearing. To us, there's nothing happening, but dolphins might be, if you like, exchanging recipes for uh, tuna cuisine or the uh, best uh, routes through the Bering Strait. I don't know. But in other words, the ancient mystics have said, not a Brahmin, the world of sound. And in fact, if you examine the basic tenets of the different spiritual traditions on the planet, you find a commonality in their understanding, the light, the university, the university, life, the universe, and everything is created from sound. Yes. First there was the, the word. First there was the right, word the, or sound. Right. In the beginning was the word, and the Lord said, let there be light, sound, creating light. And if you examine all the different traditions, I mean, you know, in the ancient Egyptian tradition, the god Thoth would yes. think of an object, speak its name, and bring it into being. In the Hindu tradition, in the beginning was Brahman, with whom was the vibration, and the vibration was Brahman. In the ancient uh, Polynesian traditions, the gods and goddesses would hit a gong or a conch, blow a conch shell and bring everything into being. And nowadays, our modern physicists are literally in agreement with what our ancient mystics are, that everything is vibration from the electrons moving around the nucleus of an atom to stars and distant galaxies having um, planets moving around them. Everything is basically in a state of vibration. If it's creating a vibration, if it's in motion, conceptually at least, it's creating a sound. And this includes our body. Every organ, every bone, every tissue, every part of the body is in basically a state of vibration and is putting out a sound. Mm -hmm. And when we are in a state of health, we say we're in sound health. Mm -hmm. And we're like an overall orchestra that is creating this overall symphony of the self. But, KG, what happens if the second violin player loses their sheet music? They begin to play the wrong tunes, the wrong melody, they're out of tune. Pretty soon the entire orchestra sounds off. Pretty soon, actually, uh, this is what, if you like, is akin to the a part of the human body vibrating out of frequency or out of harmony. And uh, we, you know, when it's vibrating out of frequency, out of harmony, it's vibrating out of ease, and we say that it, this part of the body is diseased. It is, if you like, akin to this uh, orchestra, uh, this string player who's lost their sheet music. And I come from a family of doctors. My father, grandfather, and brother are all medical people. And um, currently, with this you know, specific metaphor of the body being an instrument and of the string player having lost their sheet music, the uh, traditional approach of allopathic medicine is simply either to give this string player enough uh, drugs so they pass out, or else cutting off their head with a broadsword, which is analogous to surgery. And both of these are quite effective for basically stilling the string player. But you also have removed a string player from the orchestra. What if you could somehow give this string player back the correct sheet music? What if you could somehow project the correct resonant frequency to that part of the body that was vibrating out of frequency or out of harmony, causing it to vibrate back into harmony? And that basically is the very, very simple explanation of using sound for healing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of Bowen therapy. Have you ever heard of Bowen, B-O-W-E-N, Bowen therapy? No, I haven't. Well, it's, I've all often worked with the body at, as a musical instrument when I'm tuning it to help bring it into balance, harmonize, so that we'll heal. 
Uh, and bowen is like strumming the body. You strum in very specific areas. It's like strumming strings, the nerves, uh. the autonomic nervous system specifically for the subconscious mind to release tension and to so that it can release that. You free it up so that it can come back into harmony and balance. And so very much I totally connect with what you're talking about. Well, I mean, it's interesting because uh, while well, I don't know bowen therapy per se, uh, this concept uh, that I just stated is found in most, uh, I would like to say, holistic therapies, including, for example, even chiropractic. Palmer, the guy who formed, uh, founded chiropractic, was very, very much into the, uh, the body as being a vibrational instrument and uh, putting it in tune and harmonizing it. Now, um, the other thing that I want to say is that... Uh, I have been in this field for 30 years, and I have over 25 award-winning uh, CDs, including uh, one that's even been nominated for Grammy, and I've got myself all sorts of wonderful uh, instruments from tuning forks to this and that for healing, and I've got some very, very powerful scientific uh scientifically created instruments uh, that project the correct resonant frequency in the body uh, for healing and they're all wonderful but I'd like to say that we all have the, have the most extraordinary healing mechanism I know what you're going to uh, say yeah, the, 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 the most extraordinary uh, sound healing mechanism, which is totally natural, doesn't require electricity or batteries. Uh, it's free, and the owner's manual is relatively uh, interesting to use. And KG, what is it? My voice, your voice. You, you betcha, you betcha. And here, here's the thing that I that I like to say. A lot of people go, no, I can't use my voice for, uh, you know, for healing, you know, and they confuse. Uh, they confuse certain things because here I am not talking about getting up in front of an audience and uh, talk and you know singing stranger than in the night in front of a people and being in, you know a performer. That's performance art. I love it. It's great, but that's entertainment. Here I'm talking about using sound to shift and change your frequencies, and scientifically that is known as entrainment. And I have to tell you, KG, that we do not need to have a trained voice. We don't even need to be able to sing in tune or carry a tune in a bucket or whatever uh, verbiage you want to use. We can all go, uh, or, mm, or whatnot, and use our voice to resonate our physical body, our chakras, our etheric field, and put it into tune. And in fact, I would just like to say that, um, I mean, it, this is called toning, yes. the use of the voice as a healing instrument. And it doesn't require any training. The only thing that we owe, my wife Andy and I, who we, we teach together, we always say, well, like, you know, don't make a sound that is really constricted and constrained. You know, you're not supposed to hurt yourself, but outside of that, I mean, Casey, what happens when you stub your toe? You emit a sound immediately. Yeah, and often, like, ah, you know, or whatever. And I don't know if you've ever um, stubbed your toe and been in a place where you couldn't, but, I mean, one of the great uh, ways of working with toning is simply as relief for pain, something as simple as that. And, you know, there are all sorts of reasons for that, you know, from the you know, potential of the fact that you're making a sound that is vibrating uh, that part of the body and putting it into harmony. And um, another one, you know, would be that you're actually making a sound simply as a distraction therapy. So it's taking your mind off of the, um, uh, you know, pain that you're in. And there are all sorts of possibilities. So the fact that you could be making a sound, because, you know, when we make our own self-created sacred sounds, even like a, uh, you get the release of all sorts of endorphins, you get all sorts of neurochemicals that are created, all sorts of really extraordinary uh, different um, things occur within your body, affecting your brain, your nervous system, your heartbeat, your respiration. Here, I'm going to just for a moment, because I am 
trying to encode information to your listeners, and I'm going at a mile a minute, so I'm going to take a nice deep breath, and I'm going to ask you to do it with me. Mm-hmm. And just... Ah. And I'm going to take another nice deep breath. And in fact, what I'm going to do right now, just, you know, to, you know, bring myself back a little bit because I've been going so fast, is I'm literally going to uh, play a little bit of music from a recording that I created called De-Stress. And we'll just listen to a minute of this, and you can just immediately feel the difference in your nervous system, your heartbeat, your respiration. Nice. 